Actually, uh, President, the NDAA requires mm. the U.S. Secretary of Defense to submit a report to the, U, uh, to the Congress every six months, outlining China's weapon in uh, uh, upgrades, procurement, and military actions in Taiwan, Southeast Asia, and South China Sea. So with such a precise and detailed monitoring, could the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea be considered the most critical regions in 2024? Uh, definitely is. And also, I think that uh, this requirement uh, also is significant in two parts. First of all, uh, usually the in DOD has an annual POA report mm -hmm. every year. But uh, this report actually required the DOD to submit it every uh, twice a year. So that uh, the frequency is much higher. Uh, <clears throat> that also means that the U.S. really wanted to track uh, the development of China military and assets uh, in those areas in, uh, in a much closer fashion. Another thing is that uh, it's specified, very, very specific about Chinese military assets and resources spent uh, in the Taiwan Strait, South China Sea, and the East China Sea. That also means that uh, those areas are considered uh, to be the critical area in terms of United States competition vis-a-vis -vis China. And uh, that area also happens to be the, uh, the country uh, uh, of the first island chain. So I think that uh, b there's a very specific uh, the focus about how to maintain uh, the balance of power uh, within the first island chain. And we do know that the, uh, about the year 2010 or 12, <coughs> uh, the United States uh, talk about how the China has its own A2AD anti-access area denial strategies. Mm. But now with the Pacific Deterrence Initiative, the U.S. is actually uh, developing its own A2AD strategy toward China uh, by placing its military, especially from the Marine, mm -hmm. to spread out distributions uh, around the First Island Chain Islands so that to prevent China from dominating inside the First Island Chain and make that as a contested area. Mm -hmm.